This video presents examination of the abdomen, including inspection, auscultation, percussion and palpation of the abdominal wall, percussion and palpation of the liver, percussion and palpation of the spleen, and palpation of the right kidney and aorta. In the video, the examiner will assess a healthy patient. Keep in mind that other patients may have the same normal findings or may exhibit normal variations or abnormal findings. Before you examine the abdomen, make sure that the patient has emptied her bladder. Ask her to lie down and relax and make her as comfortable as possible. Expose her lower chest and abdomen, but keep her genitalia covered. Inspect the skin for scars, striae, dilated veins, or rashes. Inspect the symmetry and contour of the abdomen and note any peristalsis, pulsations, or masses. Also observe the contour of the umbilicus and look for signs of inflammation or hernia. Listen for bowel sounds by placing the diaphragm of the stethoscope gently on the right lower quadrant. Listen to their pitch, quality, and frequency. If the patient has hypertension, listen for bruise over the right renal artery, aorta, and left renal artery. If present, a bruise would sound like this. In a patient with hypertension, a bruise raises suspicion of renal artery stenosis, but most bruises have other causes. If you suspect arterial insufficiency in the legs, listen for bruises over the aorta, right iliac artery, and left iliac artery. Then identify and listen over the right femoral artery and left femoral artery. Lightly percuss the abdomen to assess the distribution of tympani and dullness. Tympany indicates gas in the stomach or intestine. Dullness suggests fluid or feces. Note any large area of dullness that might suggest a mass or enlarged organ. Briefly percuss the lower anterior chest. On the right, liver dullness is usually present. On the left, you may hear the tympany of the gastric air bubble. Palpate the abdomen, beginning gently and saving painful areas for last. With your fingers together, place your hand flat on the abdomen and press, using a light dipping motion. Moving smoothly, feel in all quadrants, identifying any tenderness or increased resistance to your hand. When resistance is present, try to relax the patient and palpate gently again. Just let me know if anything's uncomfortable. Then palpate more deeply in all four quadrants as you feel for any masses or tenderness. One hand on top of the other may make it easier to feel deeply. If you feel a structure that suggests a segment of colon, roll it under your fingers in one direction, then another, and try to assess its shape. Here the sigmoid colon is palpable. Abdominal pain, tenderness, and involuntary muscular rigidity suggests peritoneal irritation. <coughs> to localize it, ask the patient to cough and then show you where it hurts. Then try to localize the tenderness with one finger. Right there. If necessary, feel for rebound tenderness. Now I'm going to push down here and I'm going to let go very quickly. And I want you to tell me whether it hurts more when I push down or when I let go. Okay. Press your fingers in firmly and slowly, then quickly withdraw them. Watch and listen for signs of pain. 
It hurts more when you push down. Unlike in this patient, pain induced or worsened by withdrawal is rebound tenderness and suggests peritoneal inflammation. Percuss the span of liver dullness in the right midclavicular line. From an area of tympani, well below the expected liver, percuss up to the lower border of liver dullness. Mark this spot. A little mark here. Then percuss from lung resonance down the midclavicular line to the upper border of liver dullness. Mark this spot too. Measure the span of liver dullness between your two marks. Here it is about seven centimeters. About seven centimeters. To palpate the liver, Place your left hand behind the chest margin and your right hand lateral to the rectus abdominis muscles and well below the lower border of liver dullness. Again. Press gently into the abdomen and as the patient breathes deeply, try to feel for the liver edge as it moves down. If possible, let the liver slip under your finger pads as you feel its surface. Let's try there again. Once more. Let it out. A real deep breath. You often need to try again using different pressures and moving your fingertips closer to the costal margin. Once again, please. The hooking technique may also be helpful. Standing to the right of the patient's chest, place the fingers of both hands below the border of liver dullness and press in and up toward the costal margin. Ask the patient to take a deep breath. Deeper one more time. All right, out. This liver is not palpable. All right, that's fine. I'm going to to assess for tenderness when right. the liver is not By palpable, place your left side. hand flat on the right Tell lower rib cage and gently right. strike it with the ulnar surface of your right fist. Ask the patient to compare the sensation with a similar strike on the other side. Good. To assess the size of the spleen, Percuss the left lower anterior chest wall in a lateral direction, noting the extent of tympani. If tympani is prominent laterally, spleen enlargement is unlikely. Next, check for a splenic percussion sign. Find the lowest interspace in the left anterior axillary line and percuss there. If tympani is heard, ask the patient to take a deep breath. All right, now let it out. As you continue to percuss in the same place. When spleen size is normal, tympani usually persists and the sign is considered negative. An enlarged spleen is then very unlikely. When the spleen is enlarged, tympani often changes to dullness. This is a positive sign. This sign may be falsely positive, but it indicates careful palpation. All right, I'm going to see now if I can feel the spleen. Next, palpate the spleen. With your left hand, reach over and around the patient to support the left lower posterior rib cage and adjacent tissue. Place your right hand on the abdomen, low enough to detect a large spleen, and point your fingers toward the costal margin. When the patient takes a deep breath, Try to feel the spleen as it comes down to meet your fingertips. Repeat several times, varying your hand position and moving it up gradually toward the costal margin. Now, could you roll onto then your ask the patient right to turn onto her right side and try again. The spleen is not usually palpable. If you feel it, measure its distance in centimeters from the costal margin during inspiration. Take a deep breath, out, once again. To assess the aorta, press firmly into the upper abdomen, slightly left of midline, and feel for its pulsations. In patients over 50, try to assess the width of the aorta. 
pressing deeply with a hand on each side of it, try to estimate its width, and it's normally 2.5 centimeters or less. We're just about finished. Could you sit up, please? Finally, assess for kidney tenderness when the patient sits up. Place the ball of your left hand on each costovertebral angle in turn and strike it with the ulnar surface of your fist. Normal kidneys are not tender. In summary, examination of the abdomen involves inspection, auscultation, percussion and palpation of the abdominal wall, percussion and palpation of the liver, percussion and palpation of the spleen, and palpation of the right kidney and aorta.